Hello there, my name is Alan Butler and I'm one of the directors of Pride in Plymouth and I'm talking to you today from the Plymouth LGBT Archive, which is a project we've worked on over the last 10 years. Um, as part of that project, we've dealt with a number of stories about being LGBT plus in the city of Plymouth and one of the most difficult for us to address and, and, and acknowledge is the terrible murder of Terry Sweet and the attack on Bernard Hawkin in November of 1995. I'm sat here at the moment in the beauty of uh, Central Park in Plymouth. Many people call it the green lung of Plymouth. And it's 25 years ago, on November the 6th, in 1995, that on this very spot, two dear men, Terry Sweet and Bernie Hawken, were tortured, mutilated. One of them was murdered, the other life-changing illnesses, problems for the rest of his life, and ended up wheelchair bound. In the early hours of November the 7th 1995 the bodies of two men were found in Central Park. They'd been tortured, mutilated and left for dead. The men were Terry Sweet and Bernard Hawken. 64 year old Terry died at the scene. 54 year old Bernard was left with serious injuries and died as a result many years later. What happened to them changed this city forever. The sheltered the shelter was covered over and they put some wooden hoardings all the way around but that didn't stop the hate from continuing. In the days following the attack vile homophobic graffiti was scrawled at the scene threatening further violence against the LGBT community. It left young gay men fearing for their safety but in time came to be seen as a watershed moment. It's worth remembering however that albeit it was 25 years ago, the Devon and Cornwall police held out a hand to the local gay community. They showed support, they showed understanding, and they asked people from the community to get in touch with them and to set up some helplines. And this was at the Crown Hill Police Station. And they invited people to come in and to answer telephone calls from the community for anybody who had any inkling about who might have committed this atrocious murder. And it was to give confidence to people to ring the police, give information anonymously. And I was able to be part of that team and the police were simply amazing. And I think that was a, a real change and turnaround point for relationships between the gay community and, and the police. The case led to fundamental changes in the police force in terms of diversity and inclusion and better connecting with hidden parts of society. It really brought it home that there were sections of the community that didn't have the confidence in the police to report incidents. Um, a difficult story to tell but something that we need to acknowledge as part of our history, as part of our heritage, um, to remember these two men and to look at how far we've come, hopefully in the last 25 years, and, and how far we have to go. Um, in connection with that, we find ourselves now in a position where we're able to offer a permanent memorial to the two men. So a plaque on a bench at the, at the scene of the attack and also to plant a tree to look ahead to the future. So we're very much hoping that people in the community will be keen to support us in, in creating that memorial and also looking at perhaps some um, educational material around hate crime and continuing to challenge it in the future. To help us build this lasting memorial to Terry, please contribute to this crowdfunder. Every penny will make a difference to providing something beautiful in Central Park, but it will also help Pride in Plymouth continue their work in challenging hate in our city. Love is love, and you can make a difference by donating today. Thank you.